Hey, 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 this is the Antisocial Socialite back at it again. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, you have not yet subscribed, what are you waiting for, darling? Hit that subscribe button, smash that notification bell so when I get to running this mouth, girl, boy, and everyone in between, you are in the loop. I just want to say hi to all the new subscribers. Thanks so much for checking in. Um, the title of this video, ladies, stop pretending you're happy to be single. Oh, oh my gosh. A shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson. You know, he, he must have read my mind. And um, I was actually going to do this video yesterday talking about kind of a follow on from the whole uh, Claudia <sighs> Vivica Fox are black men letting black women down type argument. There was something that was said in that video that kind of prompted this one. And it's like, why do black women always feel the need to talk about how happy they are being single? This is kind of not really to do with O'Shea. This is more to do with an argument I was having with somebody on Instagram. And it's like, I'm not gonna listen. I'm not gonna submit. I don't need a man telling me this, that, and the third. It's that whole submission argument, which needs a video all to itself because I have my own opinions on the concept of submission. And it's like, why do black women always, or maybe all women, like to lie so much about how happy they are being single i don't know if if it's only um black women you know maybe it is because i think other races of women are a little bit more romantic they're more soft they're more tender they're more willing to kind of toe the line you know they kind of want to leave their old past behind you know all the mistakes they've made in the past and kind of play the game with a new partner and so it's like they can kind of move forward into a new phase of their life even when they've made a lot of mistakes in the past whereas I find with black women they are so hard they are so stubborn they're so adamant that they don't need a man that they become just completely undateable and unmarriable and it's like I'm strong, I'm independent, I've got my own money, I've got my own house, I take care of my own kids. And they wear this, this uh, independence badge with such pride that they end up really disqualifying themselves from getting into solid relationships with good men. It's like, I don't want to let go of my power. I don't want to let go of my independence. But at the same time, I want a man. But then I want this man but I want him to kind of submit to me. But I don't want people to know I want him to sit, submit to me. So I'm just gonna pretend like we're equal. And you know, like, um, I think it's Vivica Fox at the end of the video where she starts talking about how, oh, if the man is doing what he's supposed to do, then I can submit to him. But if you're not taking the lead, and, and I think earlier in the video, somebody said when the man is not in position, you force the woman to take on this role. And it's like, no, you want to be in control whether you are single or not. But when it comes to a time where the man is saying something that you don't want to do, you are just not going to do it because you don't want to. And that's why women, I think, have to put on this facade of being so happy being single. They don't want to face the reality that if they get into a relationship with a man, they are going to have to acquiesce to his 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 way and they don't want to give up on their freedom and their independence in order in terms of making all the decisions for their life because whether those outcomes are good or bad at least they only have to be accountable to themselves but this mindset of women kind of thinking I'm losing by getting into a relationship with a man where I have to maybe follow his leadership it's disqualifying so many black women from actually finding real love with a quality man it's like they're listening to females who are telling them don't let a man tell you anything don't let a man you know control you don't let a man um i don't know oppress you or abuse you is a these are the common words that you often hear and it's like your perception is so warped when it comes to what it is to be in a relationship with a good man that you would actually take actual abuse and call it love and not see a man trying to guide you into the right thing 
as real love. And it's like, all of this, I think, you know, O'Shea put it best how women are talking about self-love. They're talking about, you know, all the things that they're doing to please themselves. And one of the things that you often hear women say is, <laughs> this is another gripe I have on Instagram, you know, oh, I do my hair for myself. Oh, don't think because I go out looking good, I go out to get attention from men. And it's like, you're lying to yourself. You want that validation. And we know you want that validation because let a little bit of time pass and you're not getting as many guys in the DMs. You're not getting as many guys hollering at you in the street. You're not really getting a lot of guys, you know, you approach them and they're, they're not taking you up on your offer. All of a sudden you start to say, oh, well, what's going on? I look the same. Why aren't these guys checking for me like, like they were a year ago or two or five years ago? So when women say, I don't care about the validation, I do things for me. Yeah, you do it for you. You do it for you because you want to be in control. You want to get that validation, but then you want to be able to reject guys as if you have an unlimited amount of time to just keep playing this game of I'm going to get attention and reject them. And I just, I just take pleasure in in flot, you know, swatting these fl men away like they're flies. They come to me and I just bat them away. You know, there'll always be another man wanting me. There'll always be another man desiring me. And what women don't tell other women is, no, you do not have an unlimited time of, of guys who are going to take you seriously enough to want to make you a wife. You know, it's full time that women really get this in their brain that just because a guy is sexually attracted to you, doesn't mean to say that he wants to make you his lifelong partner because he's looking at you in terms of a partner as as who you are today could I spend the rest of my life with you if you never changed and that's what a lot of people in general maybe don't understand when I meet you I'm sold on who you are today and I'm picturing spending the rest of my life with you as you currently stand. Now, women try to make the excuse, oh, I saw potential in this guy, or I thought he could be this or do that. And the reality is this, the women saw little snippets in this guy that they really liked, and they were hoping they could change the bits they didn't like, or they were hoping that he would change himself for her. So, over time, when those changes don't occur, the women get bitter about the fact that they spent years with a guy who they claim wasn't who they thought he was. But what really happened was infatuation. They fell in love with the idea or they fell in love with the idea of changing the bits they didn't like. And when that didn't happen, now they're angry with themselves, but they can't say, I'm angry with me because I made the wrong decision. Okay, so that's kind of going off the topic, but that's just something that needs to be added. These wrong preconceived ideas that women have going into relationships are why so many women fail at love, especially black women, because they're addicted to the drama, they're addicted to the dysfunction, they're addicted to things like connection and talking about all these abstract concepts like chemistry and spiritual connections and you know, or what does that mean? It's absolutely meaningless. Because no matter how much you are excited and um, infatuated with a person when you first meet them, it takes time to come out of that honeymoon period to actually get to see who the real person is. Not because they lied to you, not because they, they were putting on an act, but you or me or anybody, when we get into a new relationship, it's natural to have the rose tinted glasses where we just can't see what other people can clearly see. And it takes time as we get used to a new person to actually see them for who they actually are, not who maybe they present themselves to be or whatever. I mean, if you're spending only a little bit of time with a person, maybe you're spending a little bit of time with a person in a particular setting, obviously you're only going to see one aspect of their personality. 
But when you start to court and spend a considerable amount of time together and you kind of get to know them in different scenarios and situations, that's who, you know, how you come to see who the whole person really is. But that's just that's just a side note. But black women in particular, they have this habit of wanting to kind of take a man, fix him, mould him, twist him and whatever they don't like, they think they can just edit it a bit. And then when it doesn't work out, then it was the man's fault. And I think this fear of not being able to kind of get what you want is why a lot of black women actually resort to this whole um, defence mechanism of I'm really happy being single. It's not that they're happy being single. It's that they don't want to make the changes necessary to get the men they want. They don't want to submit to the kind of men that they need. Or they just can't attract the kind of men they really like. And so they have to concede. Either I do these things or I have to kind of put on this facade that I'm really happy being single. You know, the reality of the situation is if you don't want to be single, you have to address the issue in you. Because if all your fail- your relationships are failing, you are the consistent factor in those failed relationships. So there's no point to keep talking about the men and what this guy did or what this guy didn't do. I always say two things. <laughs> Go back to your mother. What did your mother teach you? Because if a guy said, my mother let me down or my father let me down, a woman is very quick to tell that guy, you've got mummy issues. You know, you need to resolve these things with your mother. Da, 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 da. But there's a lot of women out here who have been trained not to recognise their own mummy issues. The fact that their mothers didn't teach them how to be feminine, their mothers didn't teach them how to be soft, the way their mothers treated them is how they actually go into the world treating other people. Their mothers didn't teach them how to have, um, no, I don't want to say domestic skills like you're living outside in a kennel, but their mothers didn't teach them how to be homemakers and how to love the process of loving their husbands and loving their children. You know, bringing it back to scripture, it says that the older women should teach the younger women how to love their husbands and children. And we are constantly being told that it's the woman's nature and mother earth, and she's just bringing forth life from her almighty womb. And it's like, actually, no, to be a nurturing mother is not always natural and there are countless stories of women who if they really look back or they go through therapy and they start to unpack all of the suppressed and repressed feelings they can say my mother wasn't loving my mother wasn't patient my mother wasn't gentle my mother wasn't kind my mother didn't sacrifice for me you know she pushed me but she didn't train me up as a female to be somebody's wife. And as a result, it's like, once the tree is old, can you bend it kind of thing? A lot of women cannot be bent. And so they end up trying to hide behind this this demeanour of, oh, I really love being empowered and free and single, when the reality is for a lot of these women, they really don't have a choice. They've gone so far in this this way or this manner that they, it's hard for them to be anything else. And now they've gone so far, it's like their options are so limited, they can only concede that this is my life now. Maybe I'm somebody's plaything or I've got to quote unquote settle or I have to face the future alone. So I just want to say to women out there, especially if you're young, Don't get into this mindset of talking about how happy you are being single if you know deep down you don't want to be single. If you don't want to be single, you have to reflect on what it is you need to change to get into a relationship with a high value man. And one of the biggest things that women have to do, which I find so annoying that I have to say it, is stop listening to other women. Okay, apart from me. Stop listening to other women about what men want. Actually talk to men about what men want. Because if they are the ones that you are trying to attract, it makes sense to ask them, what do you really think and feel about things? 
In the same way we have thoughts and perceptions about things. You can, I'm not a person who's like my truth, but my perception shapes the way I feel about things. And because of the fact that I'm a woman, men have to understand that women perceive and interpret certain things a certain way. It doesn't make what we think necessarily true, but a man has to understand when he says or does or acts a certain way, the woman is naturally going to interpret it a certain way. We also have to understand that when men act or, you know, think or say certain things, it's not coming from maybe the place that we would say it. We have to understand them the way we want to also be understood so that we can accurately interpret their behavior and act without saying, you're a misogynist, you're a a controlling person, you're aggressive, you're an abuser. These, this accusatory language, it doesn't help build relationships between men or women. But again, because many of us grew up in single mother households, we were poisoned against men by our own mothers. We interpret their actions in such a negative way that we cannot even think of being in a harmonious relationship with a man or following his leadership because That just seems like such a foreign concept and it actually puts us in quite a position of vulnerability. When we are not the ones in control, we don't know because maybe we didn't have fathers we could lean upon to actually let go of the reins and feel confident that a man could lead. If we're surrounded by incompetent men, men who are failing and things like this, It makes sense that black women are not really going to be, you know, eager to want to go and follow the leadership of a black man. Which is really sad because obviously if half the babies born are male, how are we raising those male children? In fact, the cycle is going to be repeated where you're going to say, I want a man that I could marry. But then you coddle the boy and turn him into an effeminate, stunted female in a man's body. And then the next generation is saying, I can't rely on a man because these men are not productive. They're not providers. They're not protectors. They're not assertive. The big word now is they're not builders. But it's women who raise dysfunctional men. And we also raise dysfunctional females. We raise females who cannot trust men who cannot see themselves relying on a good man so women especially black women have to just come to terms with the failures of their their parents generation and actually address it you know just because your mother was single and she had how many kids and you know she worked two jobs and did everything by herself that is not the life that we as black women should aspire to because the thing that a lot of black women fail to tell their children is how hard it was how many meals they missed or how many opportunities they couldn't take or how things happened because they were single and desperate or why they ended up with a man they didn't love but he was able to pay the bills and that lack of communication about the realness of their negative situation actually causes the cycle to continue because a lot of black women are like well my mother did it why can't I um you know even boys my mother was a strong independent woman blah 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 and it's like people don't realize that is part of the cycle of poverty broken families you know men and women bitter against each other it helps to keep the cycle of poverty going you know they have a lot of women trying to use this whole generational wealth um conversation or you know trigger trigger word you know it sounds good on paper but how can you have a generational wealth if you don't have generations yeah you have children being born but you don't have a legacy you don't have a father looking out across his estate saying my son one day all this will be yours you know we don't have that in the black community because we're so accustomed to this you know, ad hoc, throw together, whatever it is, if it's got some kids in there, that's a family kind of dynamic, that there's no way we can have 
you know, happy, stable relationships. And once again, people, especially black women, are like, I'm happy with this because I'm in control and I know, you know, my kids are taken care of and I don't need no man. And it's like, deep down, you really wish you did have a man, but you're not willing to do what it takes to get that man. And instead of saying the truth, you tell that even to the next generation coming through and basically spoil them before they've even had a chance. They're ruined. It's painful to see. It's something black women need to stop saying. We have to be more like non-black women who are romantic, who are tender, who are gentle, who are loving, who look forward to finding love again. And they actually want to be in that, that relationship where the man is the leader and they are able to trust him and follow him. If you are a single woman and you know you do not want to be single, do not get into this habit of saying, I like being single, because those words will become what frame your entire life. If you don't like being single, the question becomes, what do I have to do to become the person that people want to invest in? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks so much for tuning in. Like, share, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.